The Master Chief is one of gaming's most iconic heroes. Raised and trained from childhood to be a super soldier who can effortlessly flip tanks, although sometimes he struggles to control recoil. Don't overthink it. His combat record speaks for itself, meaning his legacy could never be tarnished because he's just that. Halo Infinite's campaign slaps. This bearded Malacca finds you drifting through space. He's like, thank God you're alive, Chief. Can you help me get home so I can see my family? No. You see, the Chief wants to go and kill thousands of aliens, which is way cooler than cringe family. I immediately board a Covenant ship and begin murdering a lot of grunts. As they realize they're doomed, they begin pleading for their lives. And killing a surrendering tiny alien in cold blood? Welcome to Halo Infinite War Crimes. I continue through the sea of enemies fighting my way forward. It reminds me of Halo 1's first mission and I'm a sucker for nostalgia. I just want video game companies to change absolutely nothing while also being fresh and innovative. It's not hard. I press this button and destroy the ship. Fingers crossed there wasn't any human prisoners on board, I guess. Okay, let's skip forward to the juicy part. Also, leave a like if you drink water. We've decided to land on this new Halo ring. This alien force, known as the Banished, want to destroy the human race using the ring's weapons. I actually kind of respect that, as it's an ambitious yet achievable goal. Murdering extraterrestrials, however, has never been this fun and it's all going super well until a grunt sticks me with a plasma grenade. And that's how the Master Chief died. Imagine how many alien bitches that grunt is going to get when word gets out about this. I secure the base and take in the huge open world that nobody asked for but is actually cool. The bearded Malacca then has some kind of mental breakdown about missing his kid's childhood or some BS, but we gloss over that because the chief wants to go on an adventure. The game suggests I take down an outpost, but instead I kill some small birds with embarrassing accuracy. The human race really puts too much faith in me, but as you know I have my own agenda. Death to all avian creatures that aren't pelicans. I climb to the top of this mountain using my grappling hook, which is surprisingly the best thing they've added. From the summit, I spot a camp, and if there's one thing I hate, it's campers. Get it? I assault the campsite, throwing my entire arsenal of grenades, and then realize there are marines tied up as hostages. This is alarming for two reasons. Firstly, I just threw a bunch of explosives at friendlies, and second, this Covenant species takes prisoners of war. If you remember back to when I savagely executed that three-foot grunt, we begin to realize that maybe we're kind of the bad guys. Thank Christ the Geneva Convention doesn't apply out here. I continue forward, but then realize these marine prisoners are following me around. Do you know how stressful this is? I always get overly attached to the marines, and then they always die. So now at some point, I'm going to have to go through all six stages of grief when I'm meant to be enjoying myself. Despite this new emotional baggage, I clear some outpost and now we can use it to drop off vehicles and weapons. I ask Sad Beard Boy to drop us off something spicy, and he delivers a bloody mongoose. I was kind of hoping for a warthog or scorpion tank. I mean, there's five of us and we're trying to save the world, and the big girl thought a quad bike would turn the tide of war. I honestly hope he never gets reunited with his family. We pull up on some Covenant factory, and I guess Jailbait over here isn't familiar with the element of surprise. He just straight up fires plasma everywhere. What a great plan, and now the factory has gone into lockdown. Imagine a Spartan saves you from being an alien captive. Not just any Spartan, but the Master Chief himself. A legend, an enigma, and you're with him in the flesh, and you decide, hey, I think I might have better military instinct than this green robot. And you proceed to fire an alien weapon you can barely hold from like 50 yards away at a grunt without checking in first. I wish I had that much confidence. I destroy the factory, which is great. All the marines proceed to die horrible violent deaths one by one, which is less great, but I do find a tank so we can end on a high. Classic happy sandwich technique. My next mission is to assassinate an elite general who's apparently a pretty big deal. I somewhat hypocritically fire a bunch of rockets at him from a distance, but it's okay when I do it because I'm the master chief. The actual target's invisible, so I tactically take the high ground and begin butchering his many guards. It's all going swimmingly until I make a small situational awareness error and fall off the edge of the ring. As you can imagine, this is not the position you want to be in. Forgive this analogy, but Master Chief kind of looks like a poo that won't flush. Absolutely not the image you want your enemies to see mid-assassination attempt. I managed to get back to flat ground and kill the notorious elite using heavy grenade spam, which is becoming a real crutch for me. We've got bigger fish to fry, however. You see, the Covenant have a special facility where they torture their prisoners. Maybe they're not as ethical as we first thought, as this facility would make Stalin jealous. This is like the Hilton Hotel of suffering. If I was going to be tortured anywhere, I'd honestly want it to be here, because if my pain threshold is going to be tested, it might as well be in an architecturally impressive building. I hope whoever designed this structure won some kind of alien award. 
There are more marine prisoners here, but I decide not to save them as the second I do, I swear they're going to die. I imagine that's a real morale blow for the lads, but I can't win this war and babysit a bunch of highly trained military personnel. I reverse the facility's security lockdown using the advanced AI that lives in my head and talks to me constantly. Sounds a lot like schizophrenia, but I'm 70% sure it's not. This new AI isn't as thick as the old one called Katana. In Halo 4, Katana was straight up sexy, I don't care what you say. She had no business being that thick. I take the gravity lift into the belly of the beast, ready to shut this horror show down for good. We immediately find Spartan armor, which means one of my comrades is likely being interrogated at this very moment. Far worse, there's not a lot of natural light in here. Wouldn't have hurt to put a few windows in, potentially north facing. Like I get it, they're going for the whole scary vibe, but at least have a break room with a view for the staff. These aliens are pure evil. I find the main boss here and he's like, look at me, I can do a little twirl. My Spartan brother is also here, so obviously we'll need to save him. We fight for a while, but eventually I just grappling hook the big bopper and take him down. I then proceed to violate his corpse for a while as revenge for all the nasty things this elite has done to my kind. And probably not a great use of my time as my boy is barely clinging to life. I go over and there's this emotional cutscene as other Spartans are the closest thing the Master Chief has to family. Either way, this guy better not have snitched or told the elite anything valuable or I'm gonna tell everyone he thinks the Halo 3 assault rifle is a valid weapon choice. As per usual, every potential ally we could have had is dead again and I'm running solo. Then I hear a distress signal from a group of marines not too far from my position. A chance at redemption. A chance to finally successfully complete a rescue mission. I locate the squad and fight waves of covenant by myself as the marines sit around comparing star signs or something equally unproductive. We survive and it looks like my friends have been here for a while living in a cave. They've got little beds set up and plenty of rations. Pork ribs and cornbread, spinach feta and quiche, taco pizza and breadsticks. These soldiers are stranded on some ancient forerunner ring planet being constantly harassed by vitamin D hating aliens and yet they're still somehow eating better than I am in real life. At least I know my gunner is well nourished, the man's been dirty bulking for months. The boys and I do work together, driving through an alien facility in our warthog, making memories. It's a brutal fight, but we win, and even more surprisingly, some of the marines actually survive the battle. It's a Christmas miracle. It's like a scene from a movie as we drive off from our huge win. The sun rises, and then I roll the warthog, which is quite embarrassing as I'm meant to be a leader. These spinach feta munching lads look up to me. In fact, it's so embarrassing, they leave me no choice but to ensure no one ever finds out that I can't drive for shit. These marines just won't give up. Neither will we. I continue moving through the map, slaughtering aliens. You can use the grappling hook to latch onto vehicles and then jack them. It's genuinely surprising how much a simple mechanic can so greatly improve the basic combat loop. I'm no review channel, but the core combat in this game, both single player and multiplayer, is really good. Now it's time to stop the tomfoolery and sort out the big Halo issues. There's an excavation mining site that we need to go and stop because I guess the Master Chief hates the natural resource industry. He's probably the only person who hates Minecraft YouTubers because they love mining diamond and iron ore and not because they groom children. Gotta have a code. The weird thing is, the site is completely empty. I'm ready to throw down, but the Covenant have all gone on Smoko, I guess. I whip out Katana from Wish, and she's like, oh my god, it's a trap, and they fire a huge laser cannon right at us. Fortunately, Master Chief is able to lethargically jog to the side and foil their plan. No wonder they're struggling to make progress here. They just got an entire work site to leave for god knows how many days just so they could elaborately ambush me. I'm no foreman, but that does not sound cost effective. Especially because I kill them all, and now they have no staff. I go to turn off the drill, but then a big brute is like, nah, and then kinda giggles all cute-like. <laughs> He's actually a tough little malacca, but he obviously hasn't heard about my grappling hook, and I take the high ground. He then proceeds to stick me with a plasma grenade, and the human race is now doomed forever. I do eventually kill him, and I love that the boss fights are a bit of a challenge and unique. Do you remember in Halo 5 how you just fought the same big ass ward on Eternal over and over again? Then for the final fight, they were like, hey, we've got something exciting for you. Three ward on Eternals. It was almost a self-aware meme. I enter the mines, and thank god they put waypoints for me as I would never know which way to go if they hadn't. Like here in this tunnel, I was so close to making a wrong turn, but fortunately there was an easy to follow indicator. I find another dead Spartan in the mine, and it's kind of getting a bit awkward. Like I don't want to seem disrespectful or anything, but get good kid. We're meant to be badasses, not corpses. I gently touch their shoulder, which is probably the most action Master Chief has ever had. Nice. I keep fighting forward, finding more dead Spartans every step of the way. We need to get revenge and so I decide to hunt down two high-ranking brutes to send a message. 
They're hanging out in what's quickly becoming a pelican graveyard. For anyone who doesn't know, Halo Pelicans are the main transport ship the humans use. Despite not having any practical correlation to my gamer tag, it still fills me with anger. I adopt a stunning and dare I say brave tactic of hiding far away and continuously headshotting Tuvarus with my BR from safety. Now I don't often get into gaming lore on my channel, but in this instance I will. So the Covenant speak an advanced dialect of Sangheli, and if you translate Tuvarus into English, we discover that the brute's name is actually Little Bitch Boy. His buddy Hyperus turned out to be more of a challenge, but eventually I defeat him and his crew. This is a huge victory and really sends a message to the banished forces. They may have killed a hundred Spartans already with seemingly relative ease, but maybe they won't get me. Beard Boy is impressed with our efforts and he gets all emotional. He looks into the chief's eyes and says, brother, may I please go home and see my family? It's been years. No. I love this campaign. It just goes to show that if you release a game that is finished and good, people will be happy. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Thanks for watching. I love you.